Hi, welcome to another video in this series on the Raspberry Pi. This is the fifth episode of the series. In the previous videos, we learned about the Raspberry Pi boards, their history, how to set them up for use, and learn about the usage of GPIO and SPI on the Raspberry Pi using the SysFS and SpyDev interface. In this episode, we talk about using the UART on the Raspberry Pi using C. Now there are multiple ways to do so in C. Today we see how to use the UART using the Termios framework in C. Let's go. We previously saw the feature-rich 40-pin connector of the Raspberry Pi. This is the mapping of the I.O. pins which are brought out on the connector. You have primarily three broad categories of I.O. Power, Communication and Sound. All the pins other than power can be used as general purpose I.O. as well. You have the SPI, I2C and UART which are very commonly used in embedded systems. You also have a couple of PWM pins which can be used to drive motors or some other actuators. Unfortunately, as of today, the Raspberry Pi boards don't have a hardware ADC on them, but the Raspberry Pi Pico changes that. Before we actually see how to use the UART or the USART bus, let us first learn a little bit about it. There are some terrific tutorials online for learning about this bus and we will highly recommend looking at them if you wish to learn more about the bus itself. It basically has two main players, the sender and the receiver. A node can be the sender or the receiver but not at the same time. In a typical UART implementation, you would see two connections. If using the synchronous mode, which basically has a clock as well, the link is called a USART link. The clock is generated by the USART transmitter. This is the heartbeat of the communication. The second signal in the USART link and the first in the UART link is the TX or the transmitter. The third signal in the USART link and the second in the UART link is RX or the receiver. One of the best features of this bus is that full duplex communication is possible using it, but most implementations are generally half duplex that is, a node first receives something, parses the data it has received and then responds if needed. Another important feature is that this is typically a two-point system, but a bus is possible with multiple nodes. This can be done by chaining the RX line of the current node with the TX line of the previous node and you can go on by connecting the TX of the last node with RX of the first node. With this info, let us now look at how the UART bus can be used in the Raspberry Pi world. These are some of the more popular ways of using UART in the Raspberry Pi. There are primarily two ways in which you can use this bus, using C or C++ and using Python. If using C or C++, then there are two paths that can be chosen. First path is that you can write a Linux driver that will execute within the Linux kernel. This has several advantages like faster execution, higher priority, tighter coupling with the kernel and so on. However, this is the more difficult way to use the UART bus and has a higher learning curve than the other method which is to use a framework called Termios in the user space. It has its own advantages and is pretty popular among beginners as well as intermediates and experts for a lot of applications. If using Python, then using PySerial is the best option to go with. In fact, a lot of freely available Python modules use C or C++ in the background to efficiently use the PySerial framework. As is true with almost all Python implementations, the learning curve for such a method is pretty low and heavy abstraction allows you to talk to your UART node within a few lines of code. In today's video, we will talk about the UART usage in Raspberry Pi and any other Linux system for that matter using the Termios framework. But first, 
let us understand what termios is termios is a way to use the serial communication port in the user space it defines a structure a set of functions and macros to configure the serial port in the way you want most common configurations are related to input parameters output parameters and control parameters for example do you treat the new line as just a new line or also do an automatic carriage return that is send the display cursor back to the start of the line by the way configuring is simply the act of assigning the right values to the various members of the termio structure these values are bit masked to choose the right configuration and more often than not you will already have a micro defined for the configuration you need for example you can see that the serial port on the raspberry pi is named ttys0 let us talk a little bit about how you can implement a typical uart configuration let us take the example as 115200 8 and 1 in this configuration 115200 is the baud rate expressed in bps or bits per second the character size is 8 bits the n indicates that there is no parity check so no parity bit is sent from the transmitter to the receiver and the one at the end tells that there is exactly one stop bit in the frame that will be sent by the transmitter there are a few more common configurations used exclusively in embedded systems for example since most embedded uart protocols exchange raw data the carriage returns and new line characters don't get any special treatment these are like any other values received on the bus software flow control is pretty uncommon most examples of handshake implementation are hardware based and used dedicated control signals called rts and cts to decide if transmitter can transmit and the receiver can receive similarly it is uncommon in the embedded world to see automatic conversions or interpretation for upper case or lower case characters and generally the communication is as real time as possible however it is common to use a timeout to indicate that a well formed packet has been received let us now see how these configurations can be implemented in the termios based implementation let us look at some structure configurations the termio structure has a member called c_i flag to which you can make changes for let's say ignoring the parity ignoring the carriage return disabling the software flow control etc similarly there are other members like the c_c flag that hold configuration data like the baud rate the size of the character the number of stop bits etc there is another special member of this structure called the cc array that actually holds configurations like how long do you wait for a character before timing out how many characters to wait before returning and and so on now the termios also has special functions like cf make raw that can create a predefined raw configuration for you that is typically used in embedded systems in such a configuration you give no special treatment to new lines carriage returns the echo is disabled no auto conversion of upper case to lower case and vice versa we shall use this in a dummy example later on also there are functions to set the baud rate so that you don't have to manipulate the structure members yourself similarly there are convenient functions to flush the receive and transmit buffers so that you have more control over what data gets sent out or received by the application a pretty robust implementation is possible using termios but it is a good idea to be familiar with the nuts and bolts of this framework before attempting a serious application now let us see what a bare minimum uart application may look like say you have an application that uses termios in the user space what would their exchanges look like the first step is to open the tty device Remember how we saw that the dev folder has the serial port entries that look like ttys0 s1 etc these have to be opened using the normal file io operations the next step is to configure the uart bus using termios calls the configuration 
may involve setting the baud rate, setting the parity, number of stop bits, choosing what you do with the echo feature and so on. Next, you can use simple file IO transactions on the descriptor obtained upon opening the port above. Based on the configuration of the serial port, the reads or writes can be blocking or non-blocking and can wait for a certain number of bytes to be received or transmitted. Come, let us test this flow in a loopback test. In this test, we loop back our data, that is, we try to receive what we send out. This is done by physically connecting the RX and the TX lines on the Raspberry Pi board. For this, we simply connect pins 8 and 10 of the Raspberry Pi I.O. connector. Let us take a quick look at the loopback code that we have written for using the UART available on the RPI I.O. connector. We have declared a variable of the type termios. Before we use the UART, we first have to configure it and this structure helps us to do so. The serial port available on the Raspberry Pi connector is named TTYS0. We have declared a macro with the full path to it that is slash dev slash ttys0. Like our previous code examples, we will be using modular functions to do the job for us. In this case, the functions are file open and get descriptor, file write data, file read data and file close. These functions will respectively open the serial port for us, will write to the serial port for us, will read from the serial port for us and then close it when we are done. We also have written some abstracted functions like open serial port which is going to try to open the serial port and return a failure if it is not able to do so. Then there is a function called configure serial port. In this function, we first read the existing attributes of the serial port, then set the baud rate. In this case, we are using 115.2 kbps that is 115200 and we call an API called cfmakeraw. CFMakeRaw is an API that simplifies a lot of the configuration for us. In this case, it enables the raw mode of operation. Internally, it disables the canonical mode, it disables the echo, and so on. When we are satisfied, we then call a function called TC set attribute, which is going to configure the serial port with the changes that we have done, that is the baud rate and the CFMakeRaw. We are all set to perform the demo. In the demo, we are doing a very simple activity. We populate a buffer from 0 to 255, then we write that to the serial port and sleep for a second, and then try to read it back. If the hardware loopback connection is enabled, we get all the 256 bytes back. But if the hardware loopback connection is not enabled, in that case we don't receive the data that we sent, and we report that as an error in our application. Let's look at it. Let us now try to run the data loopback application. We currently have the transmitter and the receiver lines connected using the red jumper cable. When we run the loopback application, we see that all bytes from 0 to 255 have been received successfully. Now we'll disconnect the loopback connection by removing the cable. Let's try to run the loopback again. This time while running, it encounters an error because it was not able to receive the data back. This tells us that the loopback application worked correctly. Let's go back to the video. Alright, the loopback worked. We have been able to successfully use UART on the Raspberry Pi. Hope this was useful and makes you more confident to use UART in your next Raspberry Pi project. That is the end of this video. Thank you for tuning in. And do leave a comment and a like if you enjoyed this and would like more content like this. See you soon with a brand new video about the world's favorite computer. Bye!